Welcome to my CBSE English teacher. Today let's learn the lesson The Rat Trap by Selma Lagerlof from class 12 Flamingo. About the author, Selma Lagerlof was a Swedish writer whose stories have been translated into many languages. This story is set in the middle of the mines of Sweden which are rich in iron ore. The story is narrated in the manner of a fairy tale. It gives us the message that the emotions of love and acceptance can reform others. Let's look at the theme. The theme of the story is that most human beings are prone to fall into the trap of material benefit. However, every human being has an essential goodness that can be awakened through understanding and love. A human being has the tendency to redeem himself from dishonest ways. Summary of the story Once there was a man who used to sell small rat traps made of wire. These rat traps were made by him in his free time. He used to collect the materials required by begging from stores or big farms. Still, his business was not earning him any profits. Therefore, he had to beg or steal in order to survive. His clothes were old and torn. His cheeks were lowered inside due to malnutrition and one could easily see the hunger in his eyes. The life of the rat trap seller was very sad and boring. He was homeless and slowly with heavy feet he walked along the road lost in his own thoughts. But one day he got lost in a series of thoughts which he found very interesting. The man was thinking about the rat trap and suddenly a thought came to his mind that the whole world which includes land, sea, cities and villages was similar to a rat trap. He thought that there was no meaning of the existence of this world. It was nothing but a temptation just like cheese and pork which we offer as bait to catch the rat. So according to him, as soon as someone tries to comfort himself with joy, food and shelter, he at once get trapped into this rat trap which is known as world. No one in the world had ever been kind to the rat trap seller. So he started thinking ill of others. It became a favorite pastime for him. During dull moments, these thoughts made him happy. So he continued thinking ill of those who were known to him. He would imagine those people who were already trapped in the tra trap of worldly things and also those who were about to get trapped in it. One evening, the rat trap seller was walking very slowly. He saw a little grey cottage by the road. He went up to the cottage and knocked at the door to get shelter for the night. Generally, he was not helped by anyone, but this time he was welcomed by the old man into his cottage. He was a lonely old man without wife and kids. The old man was happy to get the company that night. So the old man gave him some porridge to eat and then shared his tobacco with the guest. After this, both played cards till bedtime. The rat trap seller felt that the old man was not only liberal in sharing his porridge but also his secrets. He tells him that he was a rich man when he used to work on the rented farm. As he was old now and couldn't work, he had to depend upon his cow for his living. The cow gave enough milk every day to be sold in the factory that produced cheese and cream. The old man said that he was able to earn 30 kroners last month because of the milk. The rat trap seller did not believe the old man's story that the cow could earn him so much. Therefore, the old man took a leather pouch which hung on a window and took out three notes of 10 kroner each which were old and crushed. He showed those currency notes to make him believe his words and then kept them back in the pouch. Next morning, both the rat trap seller and the crofter woke up early as the crofter was in a hurry to milk his cow. Even the rat trap seller felt that as the owner of the house had awakened, so he should also leave the bed. They both came out of the cottage at the same time. The old man locked the door and went to his work. The rat trap seller also thanked him and went on his way.
After about half an hour, the rat trap seller returned to the cottage and broke down the window pane where the pouch hung. He took away the money, kept it in his pocket, put the pouch back as its place and walked off. The peddler was quite happy as he had money in his pocket. He then thought of walking through the forest as it was unsafe to walk on the highway because he feared being caught. Initially, it was not difficult to walk through the forest, but later on it got confusing and he forgot his way. He tried hard to walk in the right direction, but in vain. At this point of time, he started thinking that now he himself was caught in the trap of the world just like other people. He was fooled by the bait of money which he had stolen from the old man's house. The forest seemed like a prison full of trunks and branches. It was like an impassable prison. It was December and got dark early. His hope of escaping the forest reduced. The danger to his life increased and there was no way left for him. He was so tired and terrified that he thought his end was near. As he laid his head on the ground, he heard a very strong regular sound. It was a hard sound that was coming at regular intervals. He soon realized that these sounds were the sounds of hammer strokes from an iron mill. He thought that he could find some people nearby. With this thought, he gathered some strength and started walking with great difficulty towards the sound. The Ramsjo Iron Works was a large plant which had shut down few years ago. It had smelter, rolling mill and a forge. In summers, long flat bottom boats carrying the material would come down to the canal, go to a large inland lake for supplying material to the mill. In winters, the roads turned black because of the coal dust that came due to the transportation of the charcoal crates. One evening near Christmas time, the master smith and his helper were sitting in the dark forge near the furnace. He was wearing a long shirt and a pair of wooden shoes. Both of them were waiting for the pig iron which was put inside the furnace fire to be ready to put on the anvil. They took turns to stir the liquid which was very hot. As they could bear the heat for a few minutes, each of them would return sweating profusely. One could hear different types of sounds in the forge. There was a big bellow which was blowing air in the fire with great sound. Also, there was the sound of cracking coal. One could hear the bang of the charcoal which was being shoveled by the fire boy. The sounds which were coming from outside the mill. These were of the waterfall, the high speed north wind which hit the raindrops against the brick tiled roof. It was due to these different types of sounds that the blacksmith didn't realize that a man had opened the gate of the forge and had entered till he came and stood near the furnace. Many homeless people used to get attracted to the lights of the forge which peeked through the window panes which were covered with black powder of burnt coal. They would seek shelter there. They would warm themselves with the help of the burning fire. As the blacksmiths were accustomed to visitors, they were indifferent to the man. They just looked at him. The rat trap seller's appearance was similar to that of other wanderers. He had a long beard, was dirty, wore torn worn out clothes and had a bunch of rat traps hanging from his chest. The peddler tried to seek the permission from the blacksmith to stay in the forge for a night. He allowed the peddler with an arrogant consent by just nodding and didn't say a single word to him. The peddler also said nothing because his main aim was to warm himself and sleep. The owner of the Ramsjo iron mill in those days was a very ambitious person whose aim was to sell only the finest iron into the market. Therefore, he used to keep a check on the workers both during the night and the day. The owner was on a night inspection visit when the peddler entered the forge. Unlike the blacksmiths, the iron master at once noticed the peddler who was sitting so close to the furnace that steam was coming out of his torn clothes. He not only went near him but also removed the wanderer's hat 
that was bent to one side so that he could see the man's face clearly. When the ironmaster took off the peddler's hat, he mistook him as an old acquaintance, Niels Olaf. The peddler didn't know him, nor had he seen this man before. But he thought that if this man mistook him as his old companion and gave him some money out of pity, then it would be a good thing. Therefore, he didn't let him know that he had mistaken him as Nils Olaf. So the peddler started a conversation with the iron master by saying that things didn't go well with him. To this, the iron master replied that he had made a big mistake by leaving the regiment. He also added that if he would have been working in the regiment when he resigned, he wouldn't have let him do so. Later on, he invited him to his home. The rat trap seller didn't find it a good idea to visit the iron master's place. He was frightened with the idea of visiting the large house of an old soldier which according to him was not safe. After all, he had the stolen money with him. He didn't want to put himself in danger. His intentions were to sleep in the forge and go away without even being noticed. The iron master was aware of his friend's miserable condition and make him comfortable inviting him home. He told him that his wife was no more. Then he let him know that both his sons were settled abroad. Only he and his daughter were left at home. He invited him to celebrate Christmas with him so that he and his daughter may have some good company at the Christmas feast. The peddler didn't accept his invitation. So, at last he informs the blacksmith Trenstrom that it seemed that the Captain Von Stale wanted to stay with him in the forge. Then he laughed and went away, but the blacksmith knew that he was hiding something. After a gap of an hour, the iron master sent his daughter. He hoped his daughter may bring his friend home as he believed that she was better in persuading others. The iron master's daughter entered the mill with her attendant who was carrying a big fur coat. She was a humble girl who was very shy. When she entered, everyone was busy. The blacksmith was still sitting on the bench with his trainees and working on the iron. She went up to the peddler and lifted his hat. The peddler slept with one eye open and as soon as he saw her, he was shocked and jumped up. She introduced herself as Edla Wilmanson and was so sorry to hear about the hard times he was facing. She explained to him that she had come to take him home with her father's permission. Edla had sympathy for the peddler, but then she noticed the reason behind his fear could be that either he had committed robbery or a jailbreak. So, she said that he was free to leave their house at any time, but she wanted him to stay with the family just for Christmas Eve. Edla was talking to the peddler in a very nice way, which made him believe her and he got ready to go with her. The peddler wore the fur coat offered by the valet and started following the lady. He didn't even bother to notice the other people in the room. On the way to the house, the peddler felt that as he had committed a crime, he would be punished for it. He started cursing himself that if he had not stolen the money, he would not have got trapped like this. The money was a bait which had led him into a trap. The next day was Christmas Eve. Both the Iron Master and his daughter were at the dining table. The Iron Master told his daughter that they had to do something for the peddler and find some better job for him. The Iron Master's daughter said that it was strange to see that the peddler had been in such hard times and was doubtful whether the man had been educated. Hearing this, the Iron Master clarified that it was due to his bad condition. He also added that the man would behave differently after getting clean and dressed up. While both father and daughter were discussing about the peddler, he entered the room with the valet. He was looking clean as he had bathed and his hair had been cut by the valet. He was wearing the Iron Master's clothes and shoes, a shirt with a starch collar and shoes which covered the entire feet. 
the iron master seemed very angry to see his well groomed guest as now he could make out his appearance as well realize that he was not his comrade he understood that he mistook some stranger as his old friend he screamed at him and asked him to explain the peddler knew that the iron master could make out that he was not his old friend as he already knew this he was ready for the consequences and felt that the luxurious treatment was about to end the peddler tried to explain that he should not be blamed he said that he was just begging for a stay in the forge he also said that he had not harmed anyone and was ready to wear his rags again to this the iron master hesitated and said that the peddler had not been quite honest and so he wanted to call the sheriff The rat trap seller got so enraged upon hearing about the sheriff that he struck the table very hard with his fist. He said that this world is a rat trap and all the good things are obeyed just like the rinds of cheese and the small pieces of pork. Not only this, he also pointed out to the iron master that he may today be imprisoned by the sheriff, but one day the iron master will also get trapped like this. the iron master didn't like the peddler's words and decided not to call the sheriff he asked the peddler to leave at once the iron master's daughter stopped the peddler she wanted to help the poor fellow since morning she was planning how she could make the peddler stay happy on the occasion of christmas therefore she went against her father's will and stopped him by closing the door she tried to explain the difficulties faced by the peddler she said that he didn't have any house he was turned out from wherever he went and he always wanted to safeguard himself from being arrested she said that she wanted him to enjoy christmas with peace as they had promised him they did not want to send away a man on christmas whom they had promised happiness on the day the iron master was not able to go against his daughter The only thing he could say to his daughter was that she was good at convincing others better than the priest or the church but he also warned her that her decision would not bring any adverse effect on them the girl took the peddler on to the table and offered him food she saw that her father had consented to her wish the peddler didn't say any word and started eating though he was doubtful about her intentions and was wondering why she stopped him The peddler went to sleep after having food. He did not cause harm to anyone. He ate his lunch and again went to sleep. It was like as if he had never got the chance to sleep so peacefully as he had at this place. In the evening, the family woke him as they had to light up the Christmas tree. He stood there blinking as if he was getting hurt by the bright light of the candles. He again went to sleep. Finally, they called him again for the dinner for Christmas fish and porridge. After the dinner the peddler thanked everyone the iron master's daughter said the clothes which were given to him were a christmas gift from her father so he could carry them with him she even invited the peddler to be with her family for the next christmas eve and promised that nothing bad would happen next day both the iron master and his daughter went for the christmas service early in the morning they didn't disturb their guest as he was asleep Both Iron Master and his daughter had come to know that the rat trap seller had stolen a money from the old crofter. They realized that he was the same man whom they had as a guest. The Iron Master said that it was his daughter who insisted to give shelter to a thief and was wondering that how many silver spoons had been stolen by him. The Iron Master on reaching home inquired about the peddler from the valley. He told him that he was a thief. The valet told him that the peddler had left a small Christmas gift for Miss Wilmanson. The iron master's daughter opened the gift that was roughly packed. Apart from a rat trap and three chrono notes, there was a letter. The peddler had thanked his host who had taken care of him like a real captain. In return, he gifted her a rat trap and requested her to return the stolen money to the old man. He said it was She who let him free from the rat trap by raising his status from that of a mere peddler to that of a captain 
At last he undersigned as Captain Vaughn's tale.